So in this third part of this third unit on working with files, we're going to go and take the next step forward uh, in terms of complexity, and we're actually going to try and um, extract the values from that metadata. We're going to go and pass it. So rather than simply just bypassing the metadata and ignoring it, we're now going to actually try and collect that data so we can actually keep it and do something with it if we need to. So if your data or your metadata is mainly um, named value, so in other words, every bit of data has a, a label associated with it, uh, then the obvious way to go and store it, as we said before, is in a dictionary. Uh, and this is really very, very common. So the, the, the norm, I'd say, is that uh, metadata normally has some kind of label that you can associate with it. So if you look in our data file we've got, then we can see that's the case, that we've got those three lines where the label is the bit that comes before the colon, so uh, rate or um, current or temperature or temp, and then there's a colon, and then there's a, a number afterwards, which is the associated value. Uh, and so that's the, the format of the data line that we're going to try and work out how to, to pass and extract the numbers. So uh, we're going to go and do that, and the, the way we can code it is going to look a bit like this. So what's changed here is we've added a line four, where we've created a metadata dictionary. So we just created a new dictionary, and I've called it metadata. And then the other new bit is in lines 10 to 14. So the first thing we're doing in line 10 is we're saying, does this line have a colon in it? Because the other thing we should notice is that only lines with colons um, have metadata and no other lines have colons in them at all. So if we see a colon in the line, it's, a, it's a, gonna have a bit of metadata for us to work with. Um, so if the line does have a colon, then we tell Python to go and take that line and split it up by the colon. So in other words, divide it to the part before the colon and the part after the colon. And we're very much hoping that there are only going to be two parts doing that, that there's no extra colons floating around in that line. But just to be sure, we check that the length of the list of parts is only two. So in other words, there is the, the label we're going to use before the colon, and there's the value after the colon. Uh, if that's not true, if parts isn't, doesn't have length two, then we're going to raise a runtime error because it's going to mean that we've got something that's um, going to fall over. Um, because either we haven't correctly worked out what the value is, or else there isn't a value and there's just a name. Um, either which way, uh, we don't really want to try processing it. We want to just say, no, we're going to give up at this point. Um, assuming that's okay, and assuming there are just the two elements, then on line 14, that line is adding a, a new key to the dictionary. Uh, that key is given by parts square bracket zero. So in other words, the first element in the parts list, which is, should be our name. And it's setting the value of that um, associated with that key in the, in the dictionary to being the value of the second part or the second element of that list parts, which is simply just the text that came after the colon. The rest of it is then just the same. Um, you have the, the CSV reader to read the column headings and the gen from TXT to read the data. And at the end, we finish off, we print out the column headers, we print out the shape of the data. And we're also now printing out that metadata dictionary and you can see that it does indeed have the three keys, temp, current, and rate, and that the values associated with those keys is whatever the text was that came after the colon in the corresponding line. So um, one thing that's missing here, however, is that um, those values in that metadata dictionary are just strings. But when you look at them, they clearly ought to be numbers. Um, and if we're going to do anything useful with them, we probably want them to be numbers, not just random strings of digits and a full stop. So uh, we want to go and convert it to a floating point number. And as you know from computing one, the way to go and do that is to use the float um, as a function to go and convert a string to a floating point number. However, we probably want to be a little bit cautious about this because what happens if we find a file where it's not a floating point number, it's something else instead. Uh, and so if that happens, then we're going to want to go and um, make sure that we don't accidentally crash out of our program and we try and deal with things a little bit more gracefully. So this is where we're going to want to use a try and accept block in order to go and deal with that. So the code is going to look like this. So um, the only difference here is what happens in line 14, uh, where we've inserted uh, and replaced line 14 with four lines of code. So we have the try block. We then um, 
try uh, making the metadata with the first, with the same label, be equal to the value we had, the second part after the colon, but converted to a floating point number. Now, if that doesn't work, that is going to return a value error. And so we have the accept value error to catch that value error that's happened. Um, and if it's going to happen, well, the easiest thing to go and do is just say, okay, let's not bother trying to convert it to a floating point number. Let's just keep it as a string, which is what we were doing already anyway, and assign it to the metadata as a string. Uh, and that's what we do in line 17. Uh, and then the rest of it is the same. So now you see at the bottom there, the in the dictionary, is that rather than having quotes around the numbers, they're actually just numbers. So in other words, it's actually a floating point number and you can go and do maths on it uh, sensibly. Um, and so that way we've, we've done the process of automatically converting it to the right data type. Of course, in the real world, uh, you'd probably have a, a number of different things that you might have. You might have integers, you might have strings, you might possibly have true and false values. And so you need to write additional um, try accept clauses to try and um, work out how best to go and handle it. So you might, for example, try converting it to an integer first. If that doesn't work, you try converting to a floating point number. If that doesn't work, you um, try it to see whether it's true and false or on and off or yes and no, and interpret that as a Boolean. And if that doesn't work, you say, oh, well, it must be a string then. Um, uh, you can make this really quite complicated and quite long. But this, this example at least demonstrates the, the basic principle of what you're trying to do here.